I love this. Like, look, look. Hey everyone, welcome to my sewing and DIY channel. I know there's a number of you who are new to me and to my channel since my last proper video. So I just want to take a moment to say hello and welcome. In this video today, I'm going to be talking through my top 10 sewing projects for spring and summer. So I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things that I want to be sewing for spring and summer to give you an idea of what else is to come on this channel and perhaps some inspiration for your spring and summer sewing as well. I know it's already May, but as someone who's kind of a late bloomer and considering the fact that I only just recently started truly pursuing the things that I want to do for my life, I'm all for the phrase better late than never. So here we are. So this list of 10 projects isn't only just about the pattern and the fabric that I'm going to be using. Within each big project, there are like smaller things that I need to accomplish and things that I'll be sharing along the way. It might not make sense now, but once I get started, I think it'll make a lot more sense. So we're just going to jump straight into it. If you have recently voted and left a comment in my community post, this is the pattern that I'm going to be sewing. So this is the next video that you'll be seeing, the vintage McCall's 3871. I'm going to be sewing that in this vintage thrifted bed sheet. And I think it's going to look really good with the pattern. I haven't quite decided on the version that I'm going to be making. I originally thought I'm going to do a little bit of hacking for the pattern, but I'm not sure anymore. So we'll see. The other option that I provided in the poll is actually this Cult Gaia inspired skimpy top. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be sewing that as well, but it's just going to come later. I don't even know why I make polls like this anymore because I feel like most of the people here are here for my retro inspired sewing. I think I'm right to assume that, right? Leave a comment and let me know if that's the thing that made you subscribe to my channel so that I know. I'm gonna be making it in this thrifted green bed sheet that's in this kind of a olive green shade. That was actually a time in my life I was really into army green, hunter green, olive green, brown and all the really earthy, wholesome shades. It was also a time of my life where I was really unsure of myself and I was not comfortable at all in my literal skin. And I just had the idea that, oh, um, only these shades of green will suit me. I'm so glad that that phase of my life is over. With my new perspective and my new outlook in life, I'm ready to kind of embrace it again. This summer, I just want to maybe try sewing a few green pieces again. Because the Couch Gaia top is kind of itty bitty, I'm pretty sure I will have a lot of yardage left from the thrifted bed sheets that I have. So I plan to make a matching skirt with it. I haven't quite decided on the style of skirt, but it's definitely going to be meaty, definitely going to be flowy. It's either going to be a skirt with a side slit or perhaps one that's tiered with ruffles. I don't know, really depends on how I feel about the oily top after I make it. And if I'm not using a pattern, you can definitely expect a drafting tutorial or like a do-it-yourself kind of a thing together with it. So speaking of green and speaking of skirt, I'm also going to be making a retro 60s inspired A-line button front skirt in a green floral print. That was a mouthful. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I wrote a drafting and sewing tutorial for Molly Makes Magazine and I've always wanted to make an upgraded version of that tutorial. That's what I'm going to be doing for summer this year. You can expect the same level of information as my half circle skirt draft and sewing tutorial and I already know that I'm definitely going to be using this Mott 60s green floral print that I designed to sew the skirt. This green floral print is one of the five designs that I created and shared in my spoon flower store earlier this year. I also have another one in yellow, one in my favorite pink and red combination and a classic blue one and of course a black and white version for folks who are just a little bit more of a minimalist. I recently used the black and white floral version to make a pair of shorts for deer and doe's spring and summer pattern release as part of the pattern testing group and I can't wait to make more with this floral print. So yeah, I had this really vivid vision of making my A-line skirt in the green floral print with contrast trimming like white bias tape 
shape and also with the buttons I also want to use white buttons and make it like really kitschy maybe add some patch pockets I'm really excited about it if you can't wait for the drafting tutorial I also have a little roundup of a-line skirt sewing patterns on my blog I will add a link to that blog post in the description box but you can also keep an eye out for another like a-line skirt sewing pattern roundup video sometime in the near future Talking about pattern roundups, after sharing the 12 free t-shirt sewing patterns earlier this year, I've been hankering for a basic white t-shirt. And I actually was lucky enough to find this white ribbing knit. Ribbed knit. Ribbing jersey. Ribbed jersey. Anyway, this like stretchy material with the ribs. Um, I really want to make either a white t-shirt or a white tank top with it. I haven't decided if I'm going to be either drafting my own or doing another hack of the Noel bralette by Madeline or using one of the 12 free t-shirt sewing patterns that I shared earlier this year. But in any case, you would definitely see the process of that here on this channel as well. I haven't really sewn with knits and that's something that I really want to change. Yeah, the only way to make a change is to really just do it. Other than a basic white tank top slash t-shirt, I also want to make an elevated white t-shirt. So basically, I want to use the Simplicity 8130 to make a white 50s style bustier top. I have actually sewn one exactly like this before, but I kind of got rid of it before I moved to Texas because there were just a few things that I didn't quite like about it. Okay, maybe first I should talk about what I really liked about it. It's a very basic straightforward style and it goes with like basically every skirt and every pair of jeans and pants that I've got. And I also I also made it with this like shelf bust thing on the inside where I could put my bra pads in and I didn't have to wear a bra with it. And obviously that's a bonus, right? But the problem with it is that with the shelf bust, I actually use like an icky polyester to make it and it's like a red and white gingham that sometimes peeks out from the top. And the white fabric that I used is also kind of like an icky polyester blend that I didn't quite like. Also, I made it exactly according to the pattern. It has buttons along the back. I am pretty flexible, but it's still kind of a chore to put it on. So this is what I'm going to do with my next version of the Simplicity 8130. I'm going to be doing a hack very much like what I did with Simplicity 1426, but with a few more updates. So instead of one center back shared panel, I'm going to do two shared panels along the um, sides of the back and I'm also going to add a side zipper. This is the construction that I've seen in a lot of vintage 50s play suits and skin hugging tops and whatnot and I really like this construction. It's a lot more of a hassle to sew but it definitely fits better and it's definitely much easier to get in and out of tops that are sewn that way in my opinion for my body. So you can expect that little hacking tutorial coming up in the future. Now. I think it would be wrong of me to not include a bathing suit as part of my sewing plan for the summer. I mean, I, I really want to make a bathing suit. I have been thinking about this for such a long time, but like I mentioned, I just don't feel super confident about sewing with knits yet. But then I just gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I had this dream of making a 50s inspired a bombshell bathing suit with this gold stretchy swimwear fabric that I got when I was uh, on vacation in Queensland a couple of years back. This fabric is obviously very precious to me. Like I just hope that it's not disintegrating from age. Like please don't leave a comment and tell me that it's gonna happen because I am acutely aware of that. So I don't even know what pattern I'm gonna be using. So that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say about this project. Um, you can keep me accountable and be like, hey Gwen, are you making that bathing suit yet? Uh, what else am I gonna make? Oh, okay. As you can see from this basket, that I've placed like strategically right here for this video. I got a couple of um, really nice fabrics from Austin Creative Reuse a couple of weeks ago. Um, off note, I got these two pink 
fabrics. This is four yards and it's more of like a slinky. Let me just open it up. I have no idea what this fabric is, but it's got a nice drape. It's kind of slinky. And then we have this other one. It is a little sturdier, as you can see. The drape is a little different. So basically, what I want to say is that I'm definitely making a pink coordinating set. Definitely some sort of like a 50s style bra top, some kind of a bottom, maybe shorts. I still need to do my pants sloper, maybe a skirt, I don't know. Maybe I should do a pair of shorts since I'll be sewing quite a number of skirts. So yeah, this plan is really pretty much up in the air, but I will be fully using one of these to make a set. I just haven't decided it's going to be like a flowy, drapey thing or something with a little bit more structure. Last but not least, I also want to make a sleeveless blouse with this yellow plaid fabric that I got during that same trip to Austin Creative Reuse. I think this nice crisp cotton plaid would be perfect as a sleeveless blouse with an open collar and I'm gonna be drafting my own pattern which means I really need to get started with tidying up my body's sloper. In my previous videos when I was working on my autumn winter capsule wardrobe, I drafted a couple of pieces with my body sloper but there were a few like fit issues that were consistent across the makes so I definitely need to go back to the drawing board and work on my body sloper again. So that's something else that you'll be seeing in the next few videos or so. So yeah, if you have been here for a while, I just want to say that I appreciate you being here and supporting my work so much. If you're new to the channel, welcome again and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do it! <laughs> Do it if you find whatever I've talked about interesting, if you like retro inspired sewing projects, leave a comment and let me know if there's any one of these projects that really stand out. Let me know which one you are dying to see so that I can kind of like bump it up on the list. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video for more sewing, DIY and a little bit of fun. Bye! Technical difficulties. Oh, look at that stretch. Zoom so you can't see my feet.